thought it just said something about recording and I pressed yes, so maybe I did. I don't oh, know. Right. Right. No, that that means Sorry. that okay, it's the it's Joanne's is the seeds um what? She's giving you a matching mm -hmm. hug, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's the seeds um uh zoom account so i guess they have a set she's amazing uh, uh anita she's just amazing that she just figured all these things out okay we're here we're here yeah. on the way from queens new york and Vera is all the way from down there with a thing on her foot. What, Monsieur Snefesh? Yes. Yeah, they're so happy when everybody comes in. Right? Right. Okay. 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 How are you? Safta Rabba. Can't believe it. She's my age. I can also be soon Safta Rabba. That's right. That's good. Their age. It's just a matter of, you know, when they get married and when they have sex. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking at myself now in the mirror. I see myself here. I have to say, oh, is that everything on? Everything tucked in? Everything together? Okay. Beige is not my color, so I don't have any cups for matching, so. That's okay. It's gold, not beige. Beige I, is blood. It's gold. gold. Like it's gold. Like, uh... like a purple blue thing. Okay. That's okay. You can give me a disposable. I mean, I, I'm not fast as I actually probably prefer one of those. Okay. We're going to learn today a piece of a piece of a piece of a, of a teaching. Yeah. The teaching is very um, is very famous. So in Likutei Moran, it's Nun Vav, Nu. Nu, like Nu. Nu. <laughs> you know, there's different ways of saying Nu. Like, you know, you say Nu. <laughs> nu, like, or Nu. Or Nu, Nu. Nu, right? The, the, how you say it, that's how it means. There's a very, Nun Vav. There's a very famous teaching about somebody, some Sephardic guy. He got up and he said, Everything that we, um, we're, we're, it was a Sephardic rabbi, Kirov rabbi, and he said, he gave a lecture and it was a Shabbaton. He said, listen, you're coming to a very new age congregation. And everybody's like, whoa, we don't want to, you know. He said, yes, everything we do is in the, is in the, is in the, um, is in the new form. Everything we do is new. There's not old fashioned, everything is new. So once the person said, Kfon Arav, like, we thought this was Orthodox. He says, it's very Orthodox, but we dab in new. We davenu. What does it mean? Avinu, malkeinu, elkeinu, malkeinu. Everything is new. New means ours, our God. Not avi. Avi means my God. Avinu, huh? Shalanu. Correct. So elokeinu, our God. Elokeinu, and the God of our forefathers. Right. So that's the new version. So we're in new. We're in nun vav nu. And listen to where we're going to be. Find dalid. Find what? Find. You're yeah, funny. Find Dalid and then go back three paragraphs in Gimel. That's how it is. It's like in the middle of nowhere, but it's talking about Esther Malka and Purim. So we have to do Esther Malka. We have to start. When I, okay, so find Dalid and then go back. Hey, we have Me'ava Kanfo Sa'aris. We have from America. We have from Mitzvah We have from town. We have from next door. We have them remote. We also have from next door. May I have a kind of book? Okay. Um, so find where the paragraph starts. V'zeh hatsar beit ha-nashim. V'zeh hatsar. So Rina found it. If you want it. So in... Uh, let's see. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go to there. V'zeh perush. A little bit before that. On the bottom of the column before. Rina, it's right before us. In line yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. So it's in Nunz. Okay. So everybody's going to find it. You found it? Okay. 
So you go to get, go to Dalit, go to subsection Dalit, and then go back until you find Vizepe Rush. Go back. Okay, everybody has it. He's going to have to find it in. Okay. Vizepe Rush. Now we, we have to get ready for Purim, especially since my cousin just told me. Okay, that's very good. Look right, at that. Yeah. She had a search. She, had, and the right one. she yeah, does this thing, man. Whenever I wish, she wants to give me a matching mug. This is like from the year one. Yeah, that's when you were in college. Thank you, Goldilla. Okay, so my when I was walking here, you know, I have to, whatever, everything you have to do on, I, I hate when I see people walking the streets on their phone, but sometimes I have to return phone calls on the way when I'm coming here. <laughs> was that like a... Team, it's not like a team. Yeah. Uh, tea. <laughs> um, so my cousin, so I had I had to just speak to my cousin, my precious cousin, and she told me that there's um she wants to come and see you. They live in Malaz. I mean she wants to come and see you. She likes to, to volunteer. She has in Malaz with me near her, near Khanazisu. So uh, she wants to come and see you Shalayim to um do volunteering. So she said that. Um, she'll send me the list. I said, okay, maybe I'll join you if it's a day that I can have a few hours. So mm. she says she'll send me the list, but the thing that she wants to volunteer for is this. Get this. They're packaging for the soldiers Pesach food. Oh my God. Wow. wow. That's, that's, that's sad. Oh. That's like a, I said, that's like a cold water, cold water in the face. Like, Taste, first of all, it could, okay, so then then I tried to, to done, right, then I tried to down the cup slips and stay like this. I remember years ago when um, something happened on Pesach. I have friends in Beit El, and I, I have friend. I, I wish it wouldn't happen to me like this. And the, the WhatsApps come. I have friends in Beit El, and huh? No, I don't want to because then I forget to turn it back on again. And then everybody screams at me. How come you didn't see my WhatsApp? <laughs> so. Um, so, but at least it doesn't make, I figured it had to turn off, turn off sounds. It doesn't beep the people there. So uh, there's an army band base near Beitel, and they ran out of food on Pesach. Yeah. So the, the ladies in Beitel were all day long frying shinshul for the boys. They wow. should have one, at least one, one like what Hannah Zizel was doing. They were doing, it wasn't a time of war. It was just that it was Pesach, and they, they just didn't prepare yeah. properly. And so one lady, the, my friend, was all day long frying shinshul. That was her whole column, right? And the shinsel, of course, was was donated by the Makolit guy in Beitel, who just opened up in the middle of the week. And, and normally he's closed, Cholam Lady, and opened up. And whenever he had Pesach Tik food, he brought to her, and she fried everything. So, and then some other lady made uh, mashed potatoes, and that was what they had every day, a hot meal in the middle of the day. And one guy, a soldier, was the guy who was, there was one guy who was the pickup guy. It wasn't in time of war, so it was, and he was the one who was assigned to go every single day to her house. And and he would come in, and she would you know be frying and frying and schwitzing, you know, Pesach is hot here, and schwitzing, and then she would always sit down and give him a piece of cake and a cup of coffee until he had because he had to wait until she finished frying. And so at the end of the whole uh, Pesach, when they because their kitchen, this is what it was, they forgot to cash the Pesach kitchen in the army base because they didn't think they were going to use this army base. So it was a whole story. So at the end of the whole thing, when it was mostly, and they could go back to their chametzika kitchen, he came back one day. And she got nervous. She said, "Oh no, was I supposed to make supper lunch today?" And she got so, and she said to him, I, "I don't. Was I supposed to make lunch today?" He said, "No. I just want to tell you something. I came to your house every day, Chalamoy. I saw how you gave your mysterious nefesh." And he said to her, "I was brought up in a very anti-Zati world. Not just not Zati, but anti. We were really the leftists who were. I was educated that you guys are parasites in your. All the bad words that they say. I'll take a. I'll take a tea bag though, if you." And uh, and I see that everything I learned was wrong, and wow. that you have the biggest heart in the world. And wow. teach me Torah, teach me like the Torah must. If you're people of Torah, and this is how, and this was uh, anyway. Why did I tell you that story? I don't remember. because uh, they're, they're making Pesach food now for the. So maybe it's just to keep the commissary stocked. I don't know. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. That's right. They should first be packing hamantashen. How do you know that's my favorite? One of my favorites. Mm -hmm. you, you learn you learn quick, huh? Okay. This is Perush Tanaf, the ladies online. We are in Likute Moran. Nun Vav, teaching Nun Vav 56. We're at the, we're at, 
it's in it's in sub it's in subsection three, but it's towards the end of it. And the subsection three is very long. So it's, I would say seven eighths towards the end, an eighth from the back. Vizet Perush. So we were talking about Purim. We have to get to Purim first before we get to Pesach. What, let's remember, Esther was taken to become queen, and um, it takes five years till anything is happening, and every day he would walk back and forth to see, to try to figure out, like, what is Hashem asking of us? What is this? Why her of all, why she or her of all people? What is this? So every day, and he was a, he was a representative anyway of the of the Jews in the in the um maybe I was supposed to be like uh, uh I think I was supposed to claim hosts and let people in, but I forgot the I forgot the number. All right. Did anybody have a hard time with that link that I sent? You did. Okay, I forgot the link number. Let's see. Let me see if I can find it. One second, ladies. Just a second. It's in her thing. See, I wanted to really come early and prepare this, and I didn't. Let's see, ah, one hundred eight. Don't tell me. <clears throat> I think that there were people waiting to come in and I didn't and I didn't um let them in. Okay, now I'm a host. See, things do anything. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Ay Hashem, Hashem, I love you. Malchus first, Malchus Hashem, Malchus Beis David, and Mal and the Binyan of the Beis Hamikdash. This is for the, this is for that. Baruch Atzal Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Elam Shakol Niyah Bizbaro. Ah, as you touch. Okay, so every day Mordechai would go in the Chatzar Beit Hanashim. He was in the Chatzar. In the in the I think I in English, the courtyard oh, of the women's house, of so the women's section. That's pretty funny for a rabbi to be in the women's section, right? Okay, Mordechai is the Malchus. So now Rabbi Nachman is going to now take the whole Megillah Sester and flip it, or not flip it, deepen it. So now he says like this: Mordechai and Esther were both in the aspect of Malchus. Malchus means kingship. It means rulership. It means a, it means a king. It means bringing God's kingship into the world. And it means prayer, all the things that, and it's us, the Jewish people, all of that is under the category of Malchus. And each of those just, just, uh, descriptions that I just said has a whole section of itself. But first of all, Malchus just means royalty. So it means we, and Hashem is the Melech. Hashem Melech, Hashem Melech, Hashem Yimelech. Hashem is, Hashem is the Melech. But we're his representatives. We're his Nitzigim. We represent him in this world. So we're also Melech, Melechs. Right, and the Jewish people is called the wife of Hashem, so to speak. Of course, nothing. It's, it's just. It's just. Uh, how do I say? Uh, uh, like a mushal, right? Huh? Parable. Parable or metaphor. Uh, metaphor. That's a good word. Metaphor. And also within the Jewish people, the women are the malchus because we're the female, and malchus is a female sphere. Malchus is the energy to receive everything and then to give back more than you've received, right? That's what a woman does. When she becomes pregnant, she receives a seed and then she gives back a whole baby. Um, um, what? Also good investment. Well, yeah, it's a good, Hashem made our bodies. And that's why when Chava gave birth to Kain, she said, whoa, how, how'd that happen? Like Kaniti, I acquired, I created a person with God. You know, like Hashem made my body in such a way that I could do that. Men can't do that, no matter what they say. <laughs> no, no matter what they define themselves as. They can't, you know, they just can't do that. And they can't operate on a man to give him that, you know, just whatever. So, and Malchus is... All <laughs> Malchus is also the the in what Eliyahu Navi teaches us in in a teaching of his that Malchus is also referring to the mouth, 
and the power of speech. Why? Because the Melech, Gemara says, the Melech, if a Melech was in his past castle and he never made his will known. Hi, come in. Hana? Wow. Oh. I'm sorry, but I'm joy and delight that you're here. It's okay. We just started. Wow. Oh, wow. So many minia. You're a real breastlever. So many minias. You had so many things that prevented you. And he came. Gives me a chance to take a drink to take a sip. Okay, so the, the Gemara says. The Gemara says that the Melech, in order for the Melech to make his will known, in order for him, the Melech to rule, he has to communicate. So communication is a subsection of Malchus, because the Melech must communicate. He could be in his ivory tower, and he'll still be a Melech, but he won't be ruling his Malchus, and he won't be, his kingdom will be in shambles. So he uses his communication powers. That's all the category of Malchus. And also the leader of the Jewish people is also a Melech, Melech HaMashiach, right? Now, all of our leaders, whether they were kings, official kings or not, they're called Malchus. Mordechai is in the Bechina, is in the ad, he's in the category of a Melech. He was a leader of the Jewish people, the head of the Sanhedrin, and he was spiritually in the place of Malchus. It means he was trying to bring down Hashem's Malchus into this world. That was his whole avoda in life is to bring Hashem's malchus into the world. He only thought about Hashem all day long. That's all he thought about. Now we learned the beginning of this teaching a long time ago. Jesse is not on yet. Maybe she'll just like pop into the door. But I don't. She has the date of when we learned this last. But so in the previous now we're we're in Gimel. We're in the end of Gimel. So in the beginning of the. In the beginning of Nun Vav, section Aleph and section Bet, and the first three quarters of section Gimel, he explains what Torah is, or uh, he not explains what Torah is. He he talks about the Torah, and he says, first of all, the Torah. When it says Bechol Yom Vayom, what's the only thing we have to do every single day? Learn Torah. Now you know, really, we have to do a lot of things every single day. If you're a Chabadnik, then you have to. Uh, do the whole chitas. And if you're a wrestler, then you have to say Tikkun Aklali and you have to do the daily whatever. And if you're, and yeah, and there's so much to do that. And if you're, every every rabbi gives like a different daily activity to do, right? So and there's this, the things he's supposed to remember every, every single day. So many things we have to do daily. But the Hagisa by Yomavalaina, but a man has a halachic obligation to study Torah every single day. Let's just say that the that there's an uh, I don't know. And Torah is every single day. Also, davening is every single day. But according to the the, the barest letter of the law, um, you maybe maybe just have to say Shema every single day. The Rambam <laughs> talks about that you have to, that the, the, the Orisa part of that. Don't take a heter from this. Don't take a leniency. <laughs> but the Rambam says that the major the Orisa of davening is if something is happening and you have to pray about it and scream about it, that's the Orisa of davening. And everything else we have to do also. So, but every day, every day the Torah is every day. The Torah. Now he explains why. <laughs> we learned in the very beginning of this teaching that. How come every single day exists? Everything in order for anything to exist, it has to have Hashem. It has to have an Yitzutz of Kedusha. So how can we infuse? So if I use this tissue, here's a tissue. I use this tissue as a bookmark. So this <laughs> tissue now has kium. It has existence because I'm using it as a bookmark in a, in a holy safer. And any of the items that we use, they have kium or they have they 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 have their fixed tikkun kiyum if a Jew uses it in a holy way. Sorry that might sound a little racist, but only Jews are given the opportunity to to um that we have an ashama that's in such a way that we can influence the physical world um by our actions. So that's why, you know, if you if you if a person, let's just say, eats without a bracha. So imagine that there's that there is in this tea that I'm drinking, I have no idea who's in that tea. Meaning there's all kinds of holiness books that could possibly be in everything that we eat. I don't know. 
if I would drink that tea without making a bracha, then could you imagine there's a spark of holiness of a bad, bad person, let's just say, that lived millions of years ago or hundreds of years ago. And that's for, and he's been waiting to be redeemed. And he got stuck in my tea bag or that water. And if I don't make a bracha and I drink it, it's not that the bad person gets inside of me, it's just that he's stuck again in this state of not being fixed, not being redeemed. Chaval, chaval. So how do we, so we give life and chiyus to every single thing that we own. That's why I'm sure this happens to you. You go into a store and you just, I, this used to happen to me in Barnes & Noble, Alei Mashalem. Remember Barnes & Noble? <laughs> that bookstore? That used to be like one, once a month I would go in on a Sunday when I had no, you know, like when I was able to sneak out a couple of hours and go to Barnes or whatever those bookstores when there was all, and just sit around and read. And I never took a coffee there, but, you know, I just like looked around. And sometimes I would, I would scan the shelf and there was nothing there for me. Not even I scanned the titles. I just didn't feel like drawn to that. I'm sure that happens to you. Or sometimes you're in a store and you just see a sweater and you say like, ah, that's, yeah. And you just walk in and that's it. That's why you came in, because because there's something in there, in that item that is attached to you, and that you can somehow release the holiness of that particular item. That's how souls work. So now, it, or use it. Let's say if it's a book, you read it, and you right. do something, right? If it's a sweater, you wear it, and you thank Hashem for it. Every item that you own, everything, your curtains, your dog, your earrings, everything, has a stamp of your soul on it. And when you acknowledge Hashem and thank Hashem for it, you could do a big adult, thank Hashem for everything that I have, for the apartment, for the furniture, for all the kalim, for all them, then you're liberating that piece of whatever holiness is stuck. It doesn't have to be in the Shema. It could be a piece of holiness that, that needs to be incorporated into the physical world. That's what we do. That's what Jews, one of the many, many amazing things that we do. And that's why, for example, and let's say let's say there's a, something that's unkosher. Unkosher has nothing that you could release. There's no by eating. Something's burning, Golda. So, um, an, an unkosher piece of meat has doesn't have a releasable piece of holiness that a Jew can release by eating. So what is that animal? That animal had a different purpose in this world for whatever, even just to be avoided by you. Maybe you could say, oh, it's not kosher. I'm not going to eat it. And you just release this holiness by avoiding eating it, right? And using that in that mindset. Okay, so how do we mamshich? How do we give life force into time by learning Torah every single day? And that's why Hashem made time 24 hour zones in the world. Right now in Eretz Israel, it's 11 30 a.m. In UK, it's 9 30 a.m., 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4, 4 30 in the morning in America, in the the East Coast, right? There's different time zones. Why does Hashem do that? Because right now in exile, we have a Jew in some, every single different time zone, there's a Jew. And there's a Jew doing some holy work. And that's what's keeping the world alive. Could you imagine when we're all here? I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but Hashem will have released all the sparks of holiness. In the times of the Beit HaMikdash, Shalom HaMelech knew, he planted, the, he planted in Eretz Israel. he knew every single point on the planet in the ground. How do I explain that? Imagine a circle with a dot in the middle, right? A circle with a dot in the middle. And from that dot, like a wheel with thousands of spokes from the dot in the middle, there's thousands and thousands of spokes and they go in the, and they go out, you know, as long as you let them go. Out. So Shlomo Melch knew that you, Eretz Israel is the center of the world, actually the center of the universe. And he also knew where in every, where every spoke was that would go to Australia, and to New Zealand, and to Antarctica, he knew where in Yerushalayim, actually, where every source point was of every place in the world. And he would plant, he used to plant, like he planted uh, bananas, like, you know, over here, because he knew that the banana trees that grow in Panama are connected to this meridian in Eretz Israel, and that's why everything grew in Eretz Israel, and that's why we had elephants and we had lions, because where the elephants were, that's in line where in Africa they grow. So there was an elephant on that meridian line. Whatever it is, in Shlomo, the town of Gordon, Shalai, they had like six or seven different areas. And they say this corresponds to Australia climate, this corresponds to this kind of soil. And they really? have things that are indigenous wow. to that. Area. That's interesting. 
You wonder if they have a Shlomo HaMelech there. That's interesting. <laughs> anyway, so here, when you learn Torah and Yerushalayim Yerkodesh, that covered the whole entire world. And there was always 24-hour Torah learning here. We had 24-hour Beis HaMikdash. The Beis HaMikdash was 24 Mishmarot, and there was always somebody going on, something going on, always. Okay, so every day was Bechinas Torah. Sha'al yadam am shikhin achis lehayem vehamidot. The midot was worked by another time. Kanal. Chatsar beis, chatsar bay, chatsar beis anashim. So he says first, chatsar beis, ze bechinas achitson yusu pnimius. Hainu. Machshavos vziburim, she bekulam nistar hashem it parach sham. Af ha machshavot ha ziburim shalom yachokim me hashem it parach sham. Rabbi Nachman reveals something here that he said before. What does it mean, chatsar beit anashim? The chatsar is the courtyard, right? So he says, the chatsar is connected to the word chitsonius. Chatsar is the outside, and the chitsonius is the outside. In the section before, which we didn't learn yet, he talks about that a person has thoughts and then speech. Thoughts are inside, speech is outside, and even the, he talks about holy thoughts and holy speech, and then even the unholy thoughts or the uneducated thoughts of an... That we're not, that's not part of our thing here, but he's talking about the chatsar, the chisonius, and the panemius. And a person has to remember that, you know, not everything that you think should you say, not everything that you say should you do. Right? No, no, no. What is it? Not, every, not everything that you hear should you say. Not everything that you... What's say, that? Whatever you think you should say. Should no, say. Not, yeah, but there's a three, there's a three-pronged thing over there. Not everything that you say, and not everything that you think should you say, not everything that you say should you... Do, do. do uh, whatever. Oh, One of those. Speech. Yeah, but I forgot. There's a cute it's way of saying it. I forgot. It. Well, it'll come to me in the middle of the night. Whatever. <laughs> I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> huh? You know, I'm in the bathroom. And I'm, oh, that's what that. Anyway, but here's what. Here comes Esther Hamok. What does it mean he was the, in the lady section? He was in the courtyard of the lady section. Now, in the courtyard of the lady section, you have all the princesses and the queen, these ladies running around. And this big rabbi with a long beard and a long thing. And so what does that mean? So Rabbi Nachman says like this. Of course it means he was outside in the, in the palace waiting to end for Esther. And then we see that she does contact him, etc. But in Primius, in the deeper, the word nashim, mi lashon shen nashu v'kafsumi mekomo shel olam, shenit v'chatsumi Hashem isparach. The word nashim means to be abandoned. Now that doesn't make sense. It doesn't sound so nice. Yeah. yeah. Like it says, to be, yeah. It's connected. It means uh, right? Um, it says that that's uh, it, it ran away from Hashem, so to speak. What does it mean? Let's just finish it. Let's just finish it. It says that the word nashim, which means it could, it means to depart. Like it says, Kinashani Elokim, when he gave the name Menashe, right? Ephraim and Menashe. So Menashe came first. And Yosef Atzadik, when he gave the name, he said, I feel like abandoned or forgotten or cast off. That's the, that's the root of Menashe. And you know that Menashe has, you know, we've had, we have a history with that name. Because there was a very, very problematic king called Menashe. Mm -hmm. And he, even though at the end of his life he did Teshuva, but he brought a lot of Avodah Zarah into Eretz Yisrael. And he was, his name was Menashe. He was a king. You have to learn the book oh, of the kings. Yeah. yeah. He was a king. He was a king of, um, he was a king of, when Mashiach comes, can we have a Nach Yomi together? We have to go through the whole Nach. It started, it started this I year. know, it started now. You can start now. Yeah, um, is Thursday it. this past or this? Yeah. We're on Yoshua, right? Right, hey. Hey, right? Thursday, Friday, Shabbat, Shabbat, Sunday, Monday. Fine. <laughs> you did the first cycle? It. It's all there already. You did the first day. I yeah, see. I need, it. I'm up to already weigh in. I need, can you show, send me the link to where to get to? I wanted to do OU.org. But I, I tried to do it and it's then enough. just. And then, and then you can just keep on scrolling down. Ah, uh, okay. I have to find it because I'm gonna. So I did it in my own order. Uh -huh. Like I usually do things in my so own. Order. Um, I didn't even do it in that kind no of an order. order. <laughs> I did it like this. I did the whole chumash. <laughs> we always do the whole chumash and the whole. Time. Okay, whatever. It doesn't okay. matter. Okay. 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 Right. So the word nashim is from the word shichacha. It means from the word to be to feel forgotten or to feel to be to forget or to be forgotten. 
So when he was in the Chatzar Beit Hanashim, the word Chatzar means Chitzonius, the second, the external, and the difference between external and internal. And Beit Hanashim means when you're in a place of forgetfulness. Shekvar Shachachu at Hashem Yitbarach, in a place where maybe we even forgot Hashem. Nowadays in Eretz Israel, and really any Jew that's a proud Jew, any place in the world is thinking about God. Everybody is thinking about God in whatever level and way they think, because we're all focused on this war now. This war has schlepped out. Uh, everybody is frustrated. It should have been over. It should never have started, but when it started, it should have been over right away. We're at 200 soldiers, Nebuch, more, and the ones who were killed in the before, in the before the worst, you know, in the first day, and so, but nobody's not thinking about Hashem. Nobody's not thinking. Everyone's thinking. Everyone's thinking in whatever capacity and whatever connection they are. There's a connection to Jews. There's a connection to even and and I heard I forgot who said this that you know and that Hashem at the same time did the most um, contradictory behavior in that when we were attacked, you would think the world would sympathize with us. Just the opposite. They are condemning us, and they're the saying, the, not they just the, the first day. Maybe they were with us, or maybe not even. But now there's and there's conde condemnation after condemnation, and anti-Semitism is popping up all over the world. Look what Hashem is doing. If we look back, and we we read this in a book. If you read in a book, you know, fifty years from now they're going to read what happened. Look how Hashem is waking up our consciousness. Hashem is waking us up, Jews from all over the world. What? No, really. I, except, uh, I think that, you know, there are Jews who are trying to run away from their Judaism. It's true. It's true. So maybe Hashem will do something to them to wake them up. Maybe they have to have a personal encounter with an anti-Semite. I don't know. There's a, they, I saw today that, the, um, that there's a course now being offered in Harvard called Make Intifada Worldwide. Oh my and God. Harvard is giving such a course. No, they just they just now opened up a course like that. They fired the president. That so what? And then they got all their money taken away from them. And you would think that they would like, wait, hello. I was so happy that they got money was taken away, but they have Arabs with uh, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> listen. They, they also uh, are hosting a professor who um glorified October the seventh. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. it. So, so the Harvard has become I don't know, I don't know what to call them. Jewish Germany. In Germany, Germany yeah. 1935, yeah. whatever. Vieshuga, so so sometimes we're in a place where we forget Hashem. That's what, call, that's what it's called, Chatzar Beit HaNashim, the place, the external, we become so external that we that we forget, we forget who we are. We just, you know, who wants to be on the bandwagon of the trend of being anti-Semitic? There are some who do remember Hashem. They become weak. That's so many of us. We're connected, but we're not activists. And we don't know what it means to be an activist. Today I heard, I read in the Shemir Salashan, and now I'm on three daily Shemir Salashans. And so one of them said, um, because somehow the dailies don't always come daily, and I probably have to look at my spam or whatever, because it's supposed to come daily. And so if I am on three, maybe one of them will come through and help them. But, <laughs> so uh, he said that. Um, that how, you know, we're in the army, all of us are in the army, and every time we meet a pick, right, we hold back and we could say something, we don't say something, we hold it back. So we're just, um, you know, enlivening a, a soldier someplace, so we're giving strength to the side of good. Not just by, not just by, you know, sit, sit, by sitting quietly, but if you ha the biggest thing is if you have what to say, and then you ask yourself a question: Is this going to bring Ahavas Israel, love of Jews, or is it going to bring some kind of an argument or whatever? So of course, as I uh, uh, just because I'm Hashem tests me, so my the most whatever I was very impatient today with something I shouldn't have been impatient with, and that's not good. So we have to think, you know. 
So sometimes a person is is remembering Hashem, but we're weak. And they just, they're too weak. They're just not pushing themselves enough. Now, that's why they're called women. Now, why? Because nashim is also from a word, weak, exactly. Right? Only physically. Um, not even physically, no. Uh, I don't know if women are physically weak. We do have less muscle in our arms. But uh, we can have babies. They say that men can't have babies. I mean, that they can't, they couldn't tolerate. They couldn't tolerate, yeah. I guess we have a physical weakness because we have statistically less muscle per, how, whatever, BMI, the, what's that BMI? The, the, the muscle, right. Your weight. But I think it has something to do with muscle. Anyway. And also we're weak. He said that before, which we didn't learn. That means that we that we we were pushed. We were pushed to the side. Somebody has to wake up. So some of us were just pushed to the side. Some of us were forgetful, we forgot Hashem, and some of us are weak, and some of us were weak. So that's Rabbi, that's Rabbi Nachman is saying, that's the weakness of a, of a Jew who's disconnected from Hashem, is either we were, we were somehow in a situation we never were educated, number one, or number two, we felt we forgot well, we're just weak. And when the, the Yetzirah got the better of us. I know many people who just said that. I said, you know, I just can't, they just can't overcome. They're just too hard for them societally to live like a Jew. And Hashem is hidden from them. Now, this is the teaching of Afilu Bahasar Shabbat right? That when Hashem is hidden from us, because Esther is all about hidden, Hashem is still there. Now, what does Mordechai do? Mordechai comes to wake us up and to rescue us. Mordechai means Malchus. doesn't mean the person. Esther doesn't. Esther is a person, but she's also this concept of Hashem is nistar for me. Hashem is hidden for me or, 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 or far from me. I feel Hashem is far away. He's not in my Dalvanamos. Why would a person feel that way? So again, he gave three reasons. When a person wasn't raised a person was raised without Hashem, or a person forgot about Hashem, or a person is just weak, and they just don't feel the, the gender, they don't just feel the motivation, the inspiration, they feel blah. That's also an Esther, meaning they're feeling Hashem is not with them. But Esther was like that? No, no none, like none that. of this is about Esther, the person. This is all about the concept of Hastara, mm -hmm. that he's talking about the concept of Hastara, just like, Yitzchak Avinu. Yitzchak Avinu is a concept of Gevura. But we hear about him that he was so romantic and he used to play with, you know, play, kiss his wife and he was so soft with her and he was davening for her and all of that. But he's the concept of Gevura. So it's not the personality of the person in the Chumash or the Navi. It's what they represent as a concept. And that's already, that's already, what we're learning now is, is, is called Kabbalah. What does Kabbalah mean? Kabbalah means Makbil. Makbil means parallels. So people think Kabbalah is like, oh, mysticism, and I'll turn a piece of a cup of tea into a horse and whatever. That's not what Kabbalah is. Kabbalah is seeing all the par how, how Hashem made categories in this world. Everything is a, fits into a category. And in the categories of the letters, so the categories of the sefir, the categories of the personalities in Tanakh, and they have so many sub, 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 sub categories. When you get to the furthest subcategory, in that in that uh, topic, it seems so opposite of the original person in Tanakh. So Esther Malka, listen, Esther's life was a lot of hastara. She had no idea why she's chosen queen and stuck in that palace and has to go to parties every and whatever. She was an orphan. Yeah, she was an orphan. She was yeah. I wonder if she ever felt that. Maybe she felt the missing of a mother, but I don't know if she felt the missing of a father because Mordechai was you know he took care of her. Now, what is Mordechai? Mordechai represents a concept of Malchus, which we talked about before. It's tefillah. It's Hashem is a melech. It's bringing godliness into the world. It's actions. It's 
feeling dignified, all of that's malchus. Now Mordechai, which is the concept of Malchus, how, how does he wake a person up who feels that Hashem is so far from him? By, by Torah learning, right? He gives life to the to the world. And you, then, then you have Das. This week on Shabbos, Yanuka said there was somebody who came and he, uh, they ask some of the people ask such cute questions, like they don't know how to ask because every shear is just what questions do you have, and then he builds a whole shear from the questions. So somebody asks something like, "How do you know what derech to go, or how do you know that your hashkaf is right?" And it's like one of these broad questions that will take like a year to answer. So he answered. He said, "Just learn a lot of Torah. Mm-hmm. That, just learn and learn and keep learning, and you'll you'll find your answers." Just, Torah learning, just keep learning and learning and learning. And of course, the person was disappointed because I guess what he wanted was like a a, 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 a a prescription for like, you know, whatever. But that's what he said. Just learn a lot of, from this, well, not from this, but from everything. Because the more you learn, the more you have das. Das means the right way to think. When you have the right way to think, you see that nothing is hidden from you. One sec, one more sentence. Then the Torah teaches and Torah is like uh, announces. Torah is teaching you everything. You learn when you, the more you learn, the more you understand. The more you understand, the more you understand. And then you see that there's no separation between you and Hashem, and Hashem wasn't absent ever in your life. And that's why Rabbi Nachman himself said, "Write as write and publish books." Now, in his time, I didn't look this up historically, but there was already the printing press in the 1716. When was the printing press? Yeah. And uh, all the way back then. Well, he was in the 1800s. But Rabbi Nachman said that what, in his time, it was um, easy, easier, relatively. Now it's nothing. You press a button and you have a million pages pop out of a printer. But And he said, keep printing books and printing books and, and distributing right. books and spreading Torah because people have to learn. And even if they're completely not religious, it's okay. Just let them learn Torah. And eventually, eventually, if they have the right intentions, if they're learning Torah because they want to be famous or they want to become a professor of Bible in Hebrew <laughs> University, they're not going to get too far. But if they're learning Torah because they're curious, even just simple, pure curiosity, or they have even a higher, I want to come close to them, a uh, higher ser- right, searching and that will get them dust and eventually they're going to come to a good place and that's why when it comes when she comes in a second they'll flip over into you know into Sadiqim what do you have to ask? Maybe it's not appropriate but everybody has everybody's here to have a chikun but everybody's chikun is different so, so when you find yourself so is it in Hashemayim when you open the book to what you need? Absolutely totally and absolutely I'm sure you've seen that in your own life. That's why the whole thing of the egros, Rabbi, the Lubavitch Rabbi does the egros thing. Mm-hmm. So there's all kinds of, you know, we're a very eclectic group here. We don't criticize anybody that's Torah. So by the Lubavitchers, they just open up an igros and they see what the Rebbe says. So the first time I ever mm-hmm. tried that, you know, I like to try things. First time I ever tried that it was remarkable. Um, I was in, um, I was in, it was Rosh Hashanah. Uh, and I was davening, I was living in America, this is going back, I don't know, 30 years, something like that, uh, and I was davening in a very nice minion, and there was a lady next to me who uh, was had a hard time seeing, and she had a huge uh, machser, a big one, like, you know, for hard of seeing people, a giant machser, like the size, excuse me, the size of a gemara, but even calls us, she needed help to find a place, and Hashem put me that I was next to her in the shul, I never saw her before and I never saw her after. So um, I kept showing the place. Every whenever we would get to a place, I would show her. And she was very, very grateful. Anyway, um, that was Rosh Hashanah. I don't remember when the next time, I don't remember the the time frame of this, but then I heard about this whole thing with Igros. I wanted to try, I wanted to like try it out and see what I get. So I, I only had, I think I only, I, I forgot where I, I forgot. This part of, did I go to someone's house or did I have the English in my house? I'll show you once when you come over. I have my first English that I bought. I bought the English, one English volume, because they have like, I don't know, 15, 16, I don't know, of the letters. 
So I didn't want to, I wasn't so, I wasn't such a believer that I was going to buy the whole set. I bought one in English and I opened it up. This is a little, a little bit afterwards, but I'm testing it. Like, are you real? Like, does this mm -hmm. thing work? Mm -hmm. I opened it up and he talks about giving hell to a blind person. Wow. <laughs> and I had never in my life had an had such an experience of on Rosh Hashanah sitting next to a woman who was, I hope she wasn't blind, but she needed help. And I said, whoa, that's really interesting. <laughs> and there were many times when I did the Igor and I had, and I couldn't figure out the relevance at all. It was like, I couldn't figure it out. If you're a real diehard Lubavitcher, then you figure it out. But, I, you know, I, I just wanted to play around with it a little bit. I did actually the same thing. I bought a Hebrew one. And it was when my oldest was, had to, we had to pick a school system, Latino Micha, Radies and Neil, whatever. And I couldn't pick either one. And I opened up the book. I, and I ended up uh, picking Boston. I opened up the, the book. The letter's date was my son's birthday. And it said, invest in this spade in the trash. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, that's the first time. That was like a time where oh, Hashem, he gives you like a taste. <laughs> okay, the day of Adas Shlom Esther. Now, Adas Shlom Esther, we know the simple plot. He wanted to find out how Esther was doing. How do you, what does it mean, Ladat et Shlom Esther? So, we, we simple shot. To find out, Ladat is to know how Esther's faring, how she's doing. Here he says, no, the word Ladat is from the word Das. Das means knowledge, understanding. Esther now means when things are hidden, because the word Esther means hidden. Esther has to, right, is hidden. So instead of just saying to know what Esther is, how she's doing, the idea is to try to think about what is it that God is telling me in the situation that I find myself that looks so, so far away from clarity. Like, what's Hashem telling me here? How can I get das from this? How can I understand what God wants from me in a in a situation where I feel he's hiding his face from me? And what's happening with her? So now, what's happening to her? Simple pshat. Um, but now he goes to the next level, a deeper level. Ma is always chachma. Ma, chachma is koach. If the word chachma means wisdom. And the rearrangement of the letters of that word, chachma, is koach, the power of ma. I'm always asking the question of what. What should I do? How, what is this? What is this? Always asking questions. That gives you wisdom. And also understanding that we don't know. So much we don't know. And so we say like, what? What is it? I don't know. I have to trust Hashem. Also, Chachma means to trust Hashem. It also means to be in the highest, a very, very high level of attachment to God. So, Ladas, Ma Yaseh Ba, Ma here is Chachma, Shaoseh, Yaseh, Ba, you're doing with her, meaning with Esther, meaning with the Hester, with the hiddenness of God, with the hiddenness of God's ways, with the feeling that Hashem, what is this in my life? What is this? What is God taking that? What taking that big question mark and turning it into Chachma. So again, Ba here means Esther, which is hiddenness. Yeaseh means to, no, Ba means hiddenness, Ma means Chachma, and Yaseh means to take, to work with the hiddenness and make it into Chachma. Shasar B'chinas Ma, Hainu Torah, and Chachma is Torah, Kimosh Kazav Ma Haidos HaChukim, etc., See here we have uh, Pesach already. The fact that you know in your brain that even though this looks so uncomfortable and it feels so uncomfortable and it looks like Hashem is turning his face away from me and not happy with me, that's called hidden. It doesn't look like Hashem is happy with me because if Hashem was happy with me, everything would be hunky-dory. Everything would be wonderful. But Hashem is, it looks like Hashem is turning his face away from me and hiding his face from me, and that makes me feel like Hashem doesn't love me, doesn't want me, and I get confused. Instead of that, I say, no, no, no. In this, Hashem is turning his face away from me, that's Hashem. And from that knowledge, from that thought, from that meditation, that creates you, that gives you the right mindset. So that's the part we're going to learn today. Should we finish till the end? One second. 
No, because that's the next part doesn't have to do with Hester really. So what's the bottom line of this whole teaching? Everybody feels at a certain point in their life that Hashem is like hiding, right? Like that famous story about the Rebbe and his father, his grandfather. And the, so there was a little boy who one day in Chabad, one of the Chabad, you know, the line of Chabad. And uh, you see angels there. What's going on over there? You know, Arya. Arya home. He doesn't feel well yet. He's an angel. <laughs> so, uh, so the Rebbe was playing the little boy Rebbe. I think it was a. Forgive me, Chabad Nikim. I don't remember who's who in the Rebbe's. I know basically the, but I forgot this story. It Russia. was, the, and the and the grandfather. It was his grandfather or his father. I forgot. So the little boy Rebbe was a little boy at that point, and his grandfather father was a Rebbe, and he ran out to play, and then he came back in a little bit later crying. So his father said to him, his grandfather said to him, "Why are you crying?" He said, "Because we were playing hide and seek, and I hid, and nobody came to find me. Nobody likes me. They don't like me. My friends left me alone." So the father, so the Rebbe said to him, Rebbe said, the Rebbe said, he started to cry. The Rebbe started to cry and he said, oh, Hashem, you're hiding from us and we're not looking for you. We feel, I feel so bad because look, he's crying my little grandson because they weren't looking for him. He feels so abandoned, ignored. And Hashem, you must feel the same way because you're hiding, because that's how you do things. Because the word is the word the word for this world is olam. And in Hebrew, the word olam means invisible. Because Hashem is invisible, even though he's here. But we don't see him unless you feel him. But even though you have to work on it, but we don't see him like we see each other, then all free will will be taken away from us. So you're hiding in nature. You hide yourself. You make rules of nature, you make wars, you make you know, all kinds of things. And it, you, you're talking to us very directly, but through events, it's not direct, it's indirect. And we're not looking for you. We, we only, pay, you know, we're playing the game of Teva. Oh, the rain, the weatherman said it's going to be raining. No, Hashem said, I'm going to bring you rain today, right? So, but we forget that. We don't look at Hashem. We look at the weatherman or we look at the co natural causes. And, you know, so they, uh, I, so the, uh, the Anukas, mm -hmm. he said, he said this, I heard him say this many, many, many times already. And somebody asked him in Shul, how do you know what your level of Amuna is? Like, because he was talking about Amuna. He said, you know, now we need a lot of Amuna. We need a lot of Amuna. So he said, I'll tell you. He said, years ago, I thought this muscle and I haven't come up with a better one. So I'll tell you. He says, imagine that you're on a boat. And the, in the middle of the ocean, and you know, and the boat turns over, and you flop into the water, and there's a sfina, there's a ship over there. Who do you scream out to first, Hashem or the ship guy? <laughs> What's your natural predisposition? Like, where are you gonna go? Do you scream? Ah! And then, oh, thank you, you send your ship. Hey, I'm over here. You know, or do you right away go to the hand? So he says. So people said, well, of course you have to call the ship to save you. Hashem's not gonna lower a string from heaven like you know and so it's right but he says who do you trust more who do you like who do you scream to first and more strongly is to Hashem because of course you have to call the ship you have to make a shot list but who do you believe is saving you the ship or Hashem the doctor or Hashem or the doctor and the, right and all of those things this is the doctor you know it is Hashem I mean, you have to intrinsically know that that doctor is doing what Hashem is. Okay, now that everybody, so people forget that Hashem. Show. People forget the Hashem aspect of it. They they really focus on the doctor part of it. All of us. Yeah. Anyway, when everybody, when he said that, I said, I have, I heard him say this many times. Everybody let out a groan, like because <laughs> <laughs> they were like sigh, like a, a sea sigh okay. of. Oh, I guess I'm not such a big balasamuna because. I was like, oh, shit, shit, shit. Uh -huh. We're trying, Hashem. We're trying. We want to be good. We want to be good. Also, he said something very important for everybody who's listening. This is an important thing, Lemaisa. Um, it's just random because we're learning with Rabbi Nachman. So I'm just going to tell you random that, you know, Mikra, Rabbi Nachman. Huh? Mikra? Yeah. Uh -huh. No. Um, no, it's not, in other words, it's not connected to the thing that we just learned or the thing that I just said about. The ship, he said, somebody, 
Um, what? Non sequitur? Okay, non sequitur. Um, what does that mean? Like, we yeah. do nothing connected. Not connected. Okay. I learned a new thing in America. There's a new, uh, maybe you know because you're young. It's called too much information. TMI. TMI. How do you know that? I just, oh, my grandchildren. I just learned that yesterday. Oh, yes. Too much information. What does that mean, too much information? Tell me, I asked you a question. Tell me everything. No, there's such a thing now called. I'm not sorry, I'm telling you TMI. Yeah. Anyway, so um, they didn't tell me the Rosh Hashanah, they just said too much information is a new expression. Anyway, so he said that when people go to Rabbi Nachman and Ulman, which I'm, I'm sure that all of you went or will go or whatever, or maybe you just go to Maris and Mahela, Rabbi Shimon and the Kotel, because all the Nishamas are there. But he, Rabbi Nachman said about himself specifically if you come to Ulman and you say to Yikon and Cloudy and you give a coin to Tzaka, so his neshama, they'll pull you out of Gehenim. The rav, why he pays? Yeah. The rav said that's as, that's as long as you're not going to Uman to get a heter to do something wrong. Like he said, some people go and they say like, okay, I went, so I could do anything because he said he's going to pull me out of Gehenim. He says, no, 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 you have to do true, but you have to say I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going. You can't use it as a leniency to get you out of you know to give you permission to do like you know, all kinds of things and say, okay, I'm going to Rabbi Nachman. He'll get me out of this. You know, you have to. And then somebody said, well, what if you do it again? By You don't want to, but he said, no, if you try to be good and you, and you, and you just, you know, mess up. Okay. Of course it's been, then it's going to clearly helps. But if you're going on purpose to, it says, in the, it says in the Hilchas Shuvah, if you're doing Shuvah um, with the intention that you're going to sin again, the Shuvah is not, Okay, ladies, okay. next week also there's going to be this link. from Somebody has to remind me to send it. It's the link from the SEED programs. I have to thank, thank SEED. For lent, SEED in the uh, UK, SEED in London, for letting us use their link that they don't have a she right now. And so thank you, SEED. And they're going to put it, we're going to, they're going to put it on their, um, somehow I'll get it, I'll get the link to distribute it to you. So thank you, SEED. And thank you, Anita, for taking care of that. And we have a who had SEED. And uh, and Dahlia, who has things over there, and all the people in in the UK, and thank you, Ginny, our UK rep in the Shear, and hi Yehudit Batya, and hi Sarah, and hi uh, Carolyn, and hi me, and hi again Gin, Ginny. <laughs> we had a small group, uh, a small uh, a small what's it called Zoom group. What? Hi Rachel. The, the people were trying to get and they couldn't get on. I. I oh yeah. Uh, so I didn't get any, I didn't get any uh, requests. Maybe they went on a different, on the old, on, Ma, on, on, what's her name? On Ruthie's group. And thank you also, Ruthie, for always being there for us. When Ruthie's not there for us. We get all, but Baruch Hashem. Okay. Bye, everybody. Good week.